Really? Okay, so first off, we have Raynor once again picking up Protoss, and now we have Korea's best Protoss player switching to Terran? What I've got for you today is a best of five series that's the finals of this week's ESL Open Cup for the North American region. Now, spotting right here in the bottom left hand corner with the blue Terran pieces, we have none other than Hero. Hero decided to switch to Terran when he's going up against this opponent? I mean, <laughs> it's either Hero or this man right here who's got the best PVT in the world. So the fact that Hero is playing against none other than Max Specs, playing with the Terran pieces, it just seems like a bit of a disaster. Now, it's gonna be a proxy barracks, apparently, to get things started. Hero immediately wants to be aggressive right here against the Danish Protoss. So currently in StarCraft 2, we have the regional event going on, which is like a four week long tournament for the Asian region, the European region, and the American region. And long story short, <laughs> Whenever I watch the top tier Protoss players, like for example Max Specs, going up against, well, other professional players, but they're like lower tier Terrans, right? And that almost sounds a little bit mean, but whenever Max Specs is going up against really strong Terran players, but they don't go by the name of, for example, Clem or Spirit or Hero Marine or whoever, he usually kills them with a 4-gate only. So Max Specs is a big fan of 4-gate Blink Stalker. And I am very curious to see if he's gonna be giving Hero the respect to not go for a 4-gate push. Because I feel like that would be the best option against lower tier Terrans almost every single time. And obviously with lower tier Terrans, I'm talking about players within the top 25 of every server. <laughs> it's just that Max Pex is a little bit higher up than that. Alrighty, so let's see. It's gonna be a Zealot. It's almost like a skill check, right? If you can micro against Max Pex's Blink Stalkers, sure, you can play the game. But you first off, yeah, you're gonna have to defend against, well, Max Specs' Blink Stalkers. If you make any mistake here, as the Terran player whatsoever, you're usually just gonna flat up lose. Say you hit a supply block, you lose a mule, you, you make a mistake, you just straight up lose. Now, Reaper, going to town, gets a single probe so far. It was a bunker rush attempted here too, so the Zealot apparently is gonna move across the map here, fair enough. Now the Stalker is available, don't lose it. Lovely grenade right there by the South Korean Protoss, who's playing Terran in this particular match. Second Reaper too, but apparently, yeah, he's missing the Zealot, so he is gonna try and send it across the map. It is a double gas follow-up here as well from Hero, so he's gonna be transitioning towards the command center here eventually, but it's a straight up one base, one, one, one. So a one base, one barracks, one factory, one starport. Hmm. Did he just... Did he just kill an SCV with the probe? Okay. Mm, that's... That's not ideal. Zealot might be in a little bit of trouble. The problem is, right, whenever you go for a proxy barracks, the add-on production at home has to be done by the factory and the starport. Nice, a little bit of dodging right there in the tall grass. These are line of sight blockers, but... Anyways, what I'm getting at is that this factory is now, well, forced to fly all the way back home, which is gonna take about a minute. And that means that these add-ons will have to be produced right over here. Any mistakes right now and Hero is in a world of trouble. Well, this is good. Yeah, lovely. Two Widow Mines right here at the front trying to be a nuisance. Looks like ultimately though there will be an SCV killed over here. Zealot is gonna sacrifice itself as well. Max Pex wants to grab both of those mines. Lovely grenade, perfect grenade. Hero using one of those Reapers that he still had left over to boop that Stalker within the range of the Widow Mine. Okay, okay, okay. So that was actually a really neat little play. Problem is though, Hero does need to justify this opener. It's a one base play, right? One base opener with now eventually a command center on the low ground. It means that just by default, his economy is gonna be much, much smaller than that of a, well, standard Protoss build. We'll have to see how many gateways here Max Specs decides to go for. What am I drop coming in? I mean, I can't imagine that we will not see a reaction. There we go. It happens quite a bit that Protoss players Lose a whole lot of workers, but that was pretty much perfect. Yeah, can't really hope for a whole lot more. In the meantime, actually, there's a Stalker, okay, dealing a, an equal amount of damage on the other side of the map. That does make the base defense against the mines a little bit trickier, but apparently Max Pack's perfectly capable of handling both. And you can see that his APM is not bad whatsoever. Okay. So, oh, he just added another gate. That makes a grand total of four gateways. So this will ultimately be 
a four gate push right here by max specs i think he's looking at heroes build originally when he lost those stalkers i don't think the plan was to go into blink well all ins anymore obviously you can still make a third nexus off of the back of this too but now that he's done a bunch of damage on the other side of the map and now that the widow mine has not really achieved that much okay we have blink yeah perfect yeah, now that the Widowmines haven't really achieved all too much, I think it's a perfect opportunity here for Maxpex to go and test the waters on the other side of the map. Prism is available. We do have two siege tanks. This is not the time to go across the map, Hero. This is probably the worst time to go across the map. I mean, you can give it a try. Unless you assume this is like a two-gate opener. I don't think Maxpex really should lose a whole lot here, assuming he micros everything correctly. Now, that is easier said than done. Hero is actually doubling down. Okay, big warp in. Uh, you need siege tanks to defend. Well, ultimately, a couple stalkers here are certainly going to fall, but I think this is a worthwhile trade. In the meantime, there is a Banshee inside of the main base right now of the Protoss player. Apparently, this is giving an opportunity as well for that Medivac to go back home, the one that was, well, previously dropping those mines. This was only a handful of the Stalkers, by the way, going back home. Instead, we have the majority of them, yeah, right here on the side of the Terran. There's no Cloaking Field available, but a Observer was recalled too. Only a single Siege Tank right now. Ooh, out on the map here for the Terran player from South Korea, who's secretly actually a Protoss player. He's the imposter. I saw him vent. I saw, I saw it happen, okay? There's a single Bunker right now, but not even really that many Marines. Plus, I don't think Maxpex really cares about the bunker. He is very likely, there you go, to go into the main base. We do have reactors coming up here on both the tech lab, or sorry, on both the starport as well as the factory. But honestly, I think he needs more tanks. This is so much damage. Ultimately, the Widow Mines, or sorry, the, the, the War Prism, it does end up getting sniped. But there are no Widow Mines. There is no real splash damage available here for Hero. And even though it looks like he will eventually be able to re... Or, yeah. He's, he's eventually deflecting all of these Stalkers, but the problem is this is already so much damage. 24 SCVs. On the back of this, by the way, we do have a third Nexus, so this is no longer even an all-in. Prism is being remade, and problem is, even after killing the Prism, the aggression is still ongoing. It looks like, yeah, we may have had an all-army hotkey as well on that Banshee, because at this point, Hero no longer has it available. Just like that, GG is called Max Packs. Not in the cleanest of fashions, but he does obtain the victory here in game number one. Alrighty, game number two. Oh, we find ourselves on post youth. Hero apparently has switched back to Protoss. I don't think it's a bad choice. Yeah, I think switching back to Protoss is certainly not a bad idea. I mean, his Terran looked pretty solid, don't get me wrong. He certainly did throw a couple of curveballs there, but ultimately. Yeah, everybody's got a plan until they get smashed in the face, right? That's that's a, an original quote from Max Max, I'm pretty sure. They get smashed in the face, of course, with Blink Stalkers. Yeah, four gate Blink Stalker push. Very, very strong. Wasn't the cleanest option, though, right? I mean, if he wouldn't have lost those Stalkers, for example, to the Widow Mines earlier, I think that, well, that build from Max Max would have hit significantly harder. Imagine if with the original bunch of Stalkers, there were two more, right? Like, that would have been basically impossible to hold for Hero, so... Uh, him making that transition uh, so quickly into that mass bio. I, I think he got a I think he got a little thrown off when he counted the amount of gateways on the other side of the map. Because Max Pax added on another gate there in the end. And I think Hero may have had a bit of a misread when he first well got on his opponent's side of the map. Anyways, now it's time for a PvP. I kind of feel like that parent who's uh <laughs> <laughs> I sliced up the broccoli real thin, and I'm hiding it, you know? I'm, I'm trying to spoon-feed you some mirror matchups lately. <laughs> I'm trying to sneak it into my videos. Unintentionally, for what it's worth, the same thing happened in that, uh, that Raynor series, where at some point, we did have some Zerk versus Zerg going on too, even though originally that was supposed to be a Protoss versus Zerg, but he decided to make that switch. Apparently, I'm not also, even though the mirror matchups in StarCraft 2 aren't very popular. Yeah. I'm trying to spoon feed you some PvP. It's actually been ages since I last uploaded a PvP. And honestly, I consider these two right here to be the number one and the number two Protosses in the world. So, it should be a really good game. 
Hero has decided to go and proxy one pylon. Now, one thing you have to know about PvP is that proxying a pylon basically means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. It's very tricky to figure out whether or not it's going to be an aggressive push. All right, in this particular instance, it will be. Or if it's just the opponent trying to hide. This is a very... Well, I'm going to call it curious. Curious positioning here on that structure. No way. It seems so incredibly obvious. And yet Maxpex taking the long way home to try and scout for proxies does not scout the proxy that is in the most obvious location ever. Yeah, problem is, you can count pylons in your opponent's main base when you go in with your scouting probe, but very frequently does the scouting probe of the opponent drop down a pylon in the middle of nowhere and just to try and, okay, throw you off. At this point, Maxpex does just simply send the Adept across, and, well, he does spot that there is indeed a, a Robo facility coming up. Already, though, it was a Stargate decision right here by Maxpex. This is not a double gate opener right here for Maxpex, by the way. It's a single gate start into a very quick Stargate. This is something that Maxpex loves doing. He's been doing this for years. The other top tier Protosses don't seem to be as big a fan of the single gate expanse, but this is Maxpex pulling it off and him scouting the Robo facility. He's actually super good because it allows him to go into that Stargate production. As long as the Stargate is able to produce Void Rays, he should be able to shut down the Immortals with relative ease. The main problem, I guess, here for yeah, our Protoss player in uh, red right now is the fact that he doesn't have multiple gateways. So he simply doesn't have a whole load of stuff. There is still that scouting worker, by the way, in the bottom right hand corner. We're going to have to keep an eye out on it. But problem here for Hero is that he's very committed. He's fully walled in in the main base. He did not take an expansion whatsoever. And at this point, economically speaking, much like in game number one of this series, Max Pax is going to start outgrowing the opponent. Secondary pylon coming up to make sure that the Stargate can't be unpowered. We have a shield battery here, shield battery over there. Battery overcharges are going to be available across the board. I think this is a clean cut win right here for Max Pax. Well, Hero is going to try. He needs to do something. But this is, for all intents and purposes, pretty much an all in. He did bring a couple, couple sentries, which is nice. Okay, there's the uh, prismatic alignment. Prismatic alignment and battery overcharge. Very powerful tools. A third Void Ray is, by the way, going to pop here in just a moment. Nice pickup control here by Hero. But ultimately, he's getting pretty much no value out of that proxy robo facility at all. Those Immortals... I mean, it's alive. It's got one confirmed kill. But he's only made a single one. It's now going to be an Observer after the Prism. This is that Rock, Paper, Scissors aspect of PvP, you know, where... Yeah, uh, sometimes you, you go Stargate and your opponent goes Robo, you can just make Void Rays because there's no unit in the Robo facility that shoots up. It's a little unfortunate here for Hero. It's a cute attempt, but I think it's falling flat on its face. He's gonna try one more time. Prism actually needs to not go down. Losing to Prism here would be the absolute end of things. Fourth Void Ray just about to pop. Obviously, you need to be cautious here as Max Specs, right? He's within range, though, off those shield batteries. Force field not really achieving anything whatsoever. And this is, well, the most dominant win against Hero in a PvP that I have seen in over a year. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Pretty much a perfect game right there by Max Pax. Hmm, okay, so next up we find ourselves on the map site Delta. Would have been funny if uh, Hero decided to play Zerk this time around, but apparently we're gonna stick with Protals. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> this is a bit of a funky map for PvP as well, because I believe this is the only map in the current map pool that has a, a ramp leading down from the natural towards, well, the rest of the map. And it's really the only map where you can comfortably do a low ground expand. So quite frequently on this map, we see that single gateway approach where you go for a single gateway, cyber core, and then, I don't know, a robot facility, Stargate, Twilight Council to complete the wall off, and then you can expand safely on the back of it. Thing is, if you're an opponent, right, and you're fighting with a bunch of stalkers up a ramp, you're just constantly lacking vision. You you don't have that issue like you do in StarCraft Brood War, where units that shoot from a low ground up towards a high ground have a chance to miss. We don't have that effect in StarCraft 2, but vision alone is already very, very significant. And because of that, Maxpex has really popularized. He's been doing this on basically every map, especially like a half year to maybe a year or so ago. He used to do this everywhere. Nowadays, he does seem to favor the double gateway opener quite a bit. But anyways, he, he loves this build and he's very, very good at playing it. 
So far, though, smooth sailing in this series here for Max Pax. He doesn't really seem to yeah, run into a whole lot of problems. This map is a little different, though, for PvP. Ooh, Max Pax trying to block his opponent's Nexus and trying to block the Cybercore successfully twice. That's not huge. But it is about maybe a 5 to 10 second difference right now on the cybernetic score. More so a mental hit than anything else. So when you do go for the single gate opener like this, you do sort of have to have a zealot. Problem is, okay, he's going to be able to plant the nexus here. So hero cancels the zealot. But if your opponent builds a pylon in the location where that nexus would usually be built, if you don't have a zealot, it's quite difficult to actually defend. So we'll have to see if Max Pax is going to be able to start up his own base. Nope, it's going to be a Stargate immediately together with an Adept. No Nexus available here for the Danish Protoss on the low ground. So this does get scouted immediately though here by Hero, which is nice. And maybe the original plan, there you go, was to make a quick expansion, but that no longer is the case. Upon seeing that the probe indeed did drop a pylon, the Zealot is going to be marching back home and the Adept is going to be taking its place as far as harassment goes. Now, the Sentry, by the way, did go through a bunch of changes with the new multiplayer balance patch. And long story short, it's no longer light, and it's slightly more powerful against shields. Not super significant in any other matchup, it seems, but in PvP, it's been a breath of fresh air. I actually think in Protoss versus Protoss, the Sentry change is super hype. It used to, for example, right, like this is an Oracle opener, it used to get smashed by Oracles, and it still is not a great fight, but... <laughs> the Sentry actually can deal quite a bit of damage, and right now in the current meta, it's still not quite established yet, but right now we see more, for example, Sentry Expands than we have ever seen before. We'll have to see how many Sentries. Look, this is going to be four Sentries already for Hero. He is just happy to play the early game, staying alive with Spellcasters exclusively. Now, it is still a delicate, uh, delicate dance. You can't get... You can't get too aggressive. Okay, well... Upon cancelling the pylon right now, Maxpex does get the Adept in. Okay, does not commit to the shade. Let's see though. There's a shield battery in the main base. That does mean that the uh, Oracle is going to have a slightly harder time. Good force field right there by Hero. He's going to be able to tickle that Zealot to death. Stasis Ward coming up instead. Two probes get caught in it, but so far not a terrible defense. In the meantime, though, on the other side of the map, we do have a proxy gateway once again. Did Maxpex see this? He did not, but I think he's looking at his army right now from his opponent, and it is all a little bit fishy. Either that or he's looking at his, uh, well, his loss right there on the other side of the map. The Zealot and the Probe apparently have been, yeah, they've gone down so far in total. He decides to go. Hmm. Oh my god, we actually have double, double Oracle here. But he's going into a Void Ray. The Void Ray is going to be really good for the base defense. Probes are going to be pulled away. We have a couple of Adepts shading into the main base. But those Oracles, in the meantime, on the other side of the map, are destroying everything. This is so much eco loss already. Void Ray having a grand old time up in the air. Sure, the sentries can try and tickle it to death, but... I think this is an easy hold. Yeah. Did Max Max just absolutely destroy Hero? In a best of five series? I believe he did. It's a 3-0 win for the Danish Protoss. And even though Hero apparently felt confident enough to play a little bit of Terran, I wonder if maybe he shouldn't have.